Hey guys, this is Callum from English Shooting and you join me here in the Bluefield Sports gun room. You'll all know that my go-to gun for clay shooting is the Beretta Silver Pigeon. Uh, and the one that I use is actually up on the wall behind me there. But in front of me here is, I think, the pinnacle of competition over and under. It's a Beretta DT-10. Of course, the new model that Beretta now sells is the DT-11. That is their top level competition gun that you can buy. I've wanted to shoot a DT-10 for ages uh, and even the new DT-11 and today I had that opportunity. Alex has got this DT-10 in under a trade deal. It's now a stock gun here at the gun room available for sale if you're interested. And Geordi, a GMK rep, came down with his personal DT-11. So I was able to not just shoot a DT-10 or a DT-11 for the first time, but I was able to shoot both side by side. Now, what I had envisioned for this video is to do sort of a mini review of the DTs and a comparison between the two. But what became very apparent straight away was that actually something far more important which is gun fit as you can probably tell by the title of this video if you think that going and spending a lot of money on a top level competition gun is going to instantly make you shoot better you're going to be very sadly mistaken and i do have to say that i did think that i was going to shoot better over my silver pigeon you know this was around a seven, eight thousand pound gun new. The DT-11 starts at about eight thousand pound, in excess of ten thousand pound, depending on which model you go for. The Silver Pigeon you can pick up for about seventeen, eighteen hundred. But for me, neither of the guns really fit me. And actually, the DT-10 was the worst out of the two. The first stand that I went and shot at. I got one out of eight. Absolutely abysmal. And it's because it's just the wrong size for me. The stock is, I think, too short and the, the comb height is just all wrong. And it became very uncomfortable to the point where it was actually hitting me in the cheek because I couldn't get the weld on it to get the right um, sight on the rib. So for me today, the DT-11 won it. I was shooting a lot better, it fit me, it fit me a lot better certainly than the DT-10 uh, and you know, I shot reasonably well with it but I wasn't as used to it as I was a Silver Pigeon. I think today I got 28 or 27 out of uh, 50 um, and usually I'm in the, in the mid 30s and I have even got into the low 40s this year. That's with a silver pigeon, and I do a like a 50% round with a gun that's what four or five times the price, and it all comes down to gun fit. I'm sure with a bit more practice with this gun or even the DT11, I, I would get up to um, that level. Uh, probably would shoot a little better, but really it would need to be changed. I would have to have this fitted directly to me. So if you're thinking of making the next step in your sort of clay uh, competitive career, I would advise going and having the gun that you have at the moment fitted to you and, and spending some money on you know, lessons and tuition first. Having a gun that fits you and is, is comfortable and that you're familiar with in, in my opinion, is gonna be a lot better than going and spending a lot of money on a DT-10 or a DT-11. But there are people out there that when you're shooting at the top level, you're going to need a gun like this. So what are the differences? First between the DT line and a Silver Pigeon, and then I'll also get into the differences between the DT-10 and the DT-11. Well, really the biggest difference between a gun like this and say a Silver Pigeon is the build. These are absolutely solid. They're a lot more chunky, there's a lot more weight to them. These are designed to shoot hundreds of thousands of rounds 
faultlessly. This is going to outlast the Silver Pigeon by miles. You can also see in the quality of all of the components, it is certainly a very pretty gun. The wood on it for a competition gun is absolutely stunning. Personally, I thought the wood on the DT-11 today was slightly better, but the finishing, the look, they're just a much nicer gun all round, higher quality, built more solid to take more rounds. It is something that you're going to need if you're going for the Olympics or you want to shoot at a national or international level. The difference that I felt today between the DT-10 and the DT-11 was the recoil. Now, again, this is a little bit masked because this gun didn't fit me as well. And if your gun doesn't fit you, it is going to hurt a bit more if you don't have it right in the shoulder or on your face. But sort of trying to take that out of it, the DT-11 was a lot softer. And that's down to two main things. The bore axis is different between the two guns, so it directs the recoil differently. And then also the action on the DT-11 is a bit thicker and heavier. Again, that helps to absorb the, re the recoil instead of your shoulder. So yes, if I had to pick between the two based on today, I would have to go for the DT-11 over the DT-10. But I wouldn't take that as gospel. Really comparing the two guns today, unfortunately, was Apple and Oranges. This is a 30 inch barreled gun. The DT-11 was 32. And again, as I said, the stocks were completely different. The other uh, major difference between those guns in particular was the balance. So Geordie had had his DT-11 like perfectly balanced. This I found to be a little front heavy where the DT-11 just felt beautifully balanced and I shot better with it uh, as a result. So am I gonna be switching to a DT-10 or DT-11 anytime soon? Well, simply no. I can understand if you're going to be competing at a top level why you would want to go in and, and get a gun like this and, and certainly why you would need to go and get a gun like this, but I hope really that you can take something away from this that don't focus on you've got a cheap gun. It's not necessarily about how expensive your gun is, it's about how you shoot with it and ultimately that comes down to gun fit. So make sure your gun fits you, go to a reputable gun shop. The likes of uh, South Downs have a patent plate and uh, gun fitting service. You can even go to Holland and Holland, I think it's about two 150, 200 pounds to go and have a gun fitted there, plus then all the modifications. I really think that is where you're gonna get the biggest improvement in your shooting. Now, before I sign off, lots of talks about shotguns recently, but the keen-eyed among you would have probably spotted something a bit special behind me. All I'm gonna say is that it's in 338 Lepore, and keep an eye on the channel very soon because we're going to be doing a lot of shooting with it. Something exciting to come. But there we go, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it's been uh, useful and interesting for you and that you've enjoyed it. And as always, I hope to see you soon.